The simplest way to plant a garden is to divide up the growing spaces between the different crops that you want to grow. Each row, bed, or section of the garden is designated for growing only one crop for that season, with the space remaining empty for the rest of the time. This makes a lot of sense in climates with a relatively short growing season, and when there's a winter that's cold enough to clearly separate one year from the next, or when you've got lots of space to grow in. But if you're trying to get more than one crop out of a section of the garden in each season, things tend to get a little bit more complicated, with more focus needed on trying to figure out the best spacing, timing, and crop selection. There are a number of different ways to do this, and this year I tried a version of intercropping or relay cropping in my larger polytunnel. I wanted to get the main summer fruiting crops into the ground early enough so that I could get a really big yield, but I also wanted to harvest a lot from the late spring and early summer crops in order to help fill the hungry gap. In many places where there is very little or no growth over a cold winter season, there tends to be a period of time in late spring or early summer when there can be very little available to eat that has been grown in our gardens. During this hungry gap, crops that were stored or remained in our gardens over winter tend to run out or start to sprout or are beginning to rot, and very little is available from the outside gardens because things are only starting to grow. In the maritime climate here in Ireland, I have found that polytunnels can be a very useful for growing a wide range of early crops to help fill this hungry gap, but I also want to use these protected microclimates to grow lots of tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers. I have found that there is a conflict between using this space to produce late spring and early summer fresh vegetables, as well as being able to transplant the heat-loving summer crops into the ground early enough to be able to get an abundant harvest. In my older family-scale polytunnel garden, I get around this conflict by dividing the space in two, with only half of the garden available to grow the high-value summer crops, leaving the other half to grow crops to fill the hungry gap, and then to grow a diversity of faster-growing vegetables later in the season. In the larger semi-commercial polytunnel, I wanted to take advantage of the full space to grow these heat-loving crops in the summer and autumn, but also to produce an abundance of hungry gap crops in the late spring and early summer. So this year I decided to try merging the different seasons using a relay intercropping strategy, with plants from the later season growing beside the earlier crops for a while, and this seemed to have worked quite well, though not without its issues. The full 110 square meter space of this enclosed garden was empty over the winter, and all of the first batch of crops were sown in March. I laid out the planting of this garden so that there were three rows of different crops in each of the five fixed beds, with 15 rows in total. I grew what I felt were the faster growing crops in the middle row of each bed, with plans to replace them with transplants of the larger summer crops, and the two outside rows of each bed would be used for crops that I thought would take longer to mature. So this was a successional or sequential cropping in the central row of each bed, with a fast growing crop being harvested and removed before the main season plants needed to go in. The timing of this succession worked really well with one batch of rocket or arugula that was finished cropping in good time for the peppers to be transplanted in. But the other batch of rocket was finished long before the cucumbers needed the space. This faster growing crops could have been swapped with a longer growing crop such as the mix of spicy Asian greens that were still producing leaves for harvesting when the courgettes and beans were ready for transplanting. In the case of the radishes, I sowed only one section of the long row each week, and I ended up having to pull out the last of the batch before they were ready, as the tomato plants were really needing to be transplanted. I also ended up harvesting a lot of scallions or spring onions at once, so that the second row of tomato plants could get into the ground. In four of the beds, the summer crops were relay intercropped between two other rows of established crops for at least a few weeks, but in the fifth bed, both the spinach and the turnip ended up being harvested and removed before the later crops were transplanted into this bed. As each of these remaining rows of hungry gap crops were harvested and removed, I had plans to plant another succession of salad greens and herbs as an intercrop to grow in the partial shade of the summer fruiting crops. I could have improved the timing of some of these successions of plantings, but for the most part I'm quite pleased with how things turned out with my first major attempt at intercropping. The first harvest from these spring crops started in the second week of April, and a few crops including the beetroot carrots and kale continued to be harvested towards the end of June. The greatest diversity of crops was available during the first week of May before any of the summer crops were transplanted in, but the most productive period was from the beginning of May right through to the middle of June, with about 9 kilograms or almost 20 pounds per day of fresh vegetables being harvested on average.
More than half of the total harvest from these crops came after the tomato and pepper plants were intercropped into three of the five beds, which is what I hoped would be the case with this strategy. Looking at the harvest from the individual rows, the lowest yields were from the radishes and scallions, which had the shortest period of time to grow before the tomatoes replaced them. But gee, each of them still produced more than 13 kilograms in that time. The rows of rocket, lettuce, spinach, and greens each produced at least 20 kilograms, with an average of 28 kilograms harvested from each of the 18 to 20 meter long rows. The beetroot produced more than 45 kilograms per row, including most of the edible leaves, but the carrots produced less than half of that, partially because they are the slowest growing plants in the set, but I also had sporadic germination which led to gaps in the rows. The largest yield came from a hybrid variety of turnip, one row of which produced over 90 kilograms of tender roots and edible leaves in an amazingly short period of time. The kale had been planted quite densely in a row, and I harvested it as a cut and come again crop, with successive cuts being made for more than two months. This kale was the last crop to be removed, and could probably have continued to produce a reasonable harvest for a while longer, but I was concerned that it was causing too much competition for the row of tomato plants right beside them. Overall, I was able to harvest 500 kilograms of a diverse range of vegetables from this polytunnel from this first set of crops, which is a lot of food to be able to produce during this normally lean part of the season. And I was still able to transplant the warm season crops into the polytunnel earlier than I usually would be able to, and that is really the main benefit of this type of relay intercropping. As I didn't do any side-by-side -side comparisons of intercropping versus growing the same plants in separate beds, I really can't determine how much the crops were impacted by this approach. I did grow tomato plants in the other polytunnel, and they definitely seemed to get off to a better start without having to compete with the other crops right beside them. But the difference could also be due to the extra warm conditions with the thermal mass that I had added, or the more developed soil fertility in that garden, as well as a different method of planting. For this larger polytunnel, it probably would have been better if I had sown the tomato seeds a few weeks later, or grown them in cooler conditions so they were not so big and likely stressed by the time I was able to transplant them into the soil. Or I could have made sure that any crop growing before the tomatoes was ready to be removed earlier in the spring. There were some situations with a bit too much overshadowing and crowding within the beds, and there seemed to have been an issue with the transplants having to compete with the more established plants for soil fertility. There were definite signs of nutrient deficiencies in a lot of the tomato plants, and the cucumber plants seemed to be lacking in nitrogen, and no doubt the dense planting of fast-growing crops had soaked up a lot of the nitrogen in the soil. I did side dress the summer crops with some more chicken manure pellets and compost to help alleviate this issue, as well as regular foliar feeding, and the plants now seem to be growing well for the most part. In hindsight, I should have added extra fertility into the planting holes to give these transplants an extra boost. But I expect that if the soil organic matter and fertility levels to continue to develop over the next few years, this will become less of an issue. Towards the end of June, the harvest from the hungry gap crops in the polytunnel began to decline, but this coincided nicely with the increasing yields from the outside gardens which meant that there was a fairly consistent supply of a reasonable range of vegetables throughout the Hungry Gap. In the past few weeks, I've started harvesting from most of the summer crops in this enclosed gardens, and I expect the yields to increase quite quickly over the next few weeks. And if I look after these crops well, this abundant harvest could last for another three months, and then after that I will replace these summer fruit-bearing crops with a range of overwintering plants. In the meanwhile, I'm going to continue to intercrop an understory of herbs, lettuce, and other salad greens beside the tomatoes, peppers, and cucumber plants, but I need to make sure that the lower leaves of these taller plants are removed to let more of the sunlight through. I'm really not sure how well all of this will work out, how quickly plants will grow, and what kind of quality I can expect from this type of intensive summer intercropping in a polytunnel, but there have already been some issues. I definitely underestimated how quickly the courgette or zucchini plants would grow and overwhelm the crops of salad greens that I tried to sneak in beside them, and the radishes have not been nearly as good as a spring crop was, but the lettuce and some of the herbs are starting to become quite productive. I'm looking forward to trying out a few other options next year, and to figure out how to use this type of planting to improve the diversity, quality, and quantity of vegetables that are available throughout the full year. But it was definitely great to be able to harvest such abundance over the last few months, and to see this polytunnel looking so full and productive at this time of year.